Hi, this is Minas Maria, the soldier of Mary. Today I'm looking at 20 arguments against the authenticity of Garabandau. These are put together by the late Rick Salvato, who did an amazing website looking at different apparitions, exploring the truth of apparitions. And he did quite an impressive study on Garabandau back in the day. I remember reading this when I was a youngster. And he called them the most dangerous apparitions in the world. I think that this particular section might actually be by an individual calling himself Water Ink X Mark. I'm not sure if that's said correctly, but I thought I would go through 20 negative arguments against so called apparitions of Garabandau and giving some kind of response, giving my take on them, having studied the apparitions at length, seeing how well these arguments hold up as to the overall authenticity of the apparitions. And I'm going to shoot through them pretty quickly. Number one, all eight bishops of Santander have up to now, supported by the Holy See in Rome, publicly declared that new supernatural apparitions had taken place in Garabandau. Is that definitive? Not necessarily, because although it's certainly important that the even up to now, the bishops of Santander have always said that they're not constant with the idea of them being supernatural. But Rome itself hasn't come in and said definitively on the apparitions, but it's certainly true. The bishops have said that they're not supernatural, but the bishop's statements are provisional in as much as the future bishop could say that the apparitions are supernatural. The people in favour of the apparitions say that these conclusions have been made because the apparitions have not been properly investigated. The second one, the parish priest told me during my third visit in the year 2000 that the apparitions had caused, caused problems in the Spanish church. I think that that may be the true, but that may be true, but quite possibly the apparitions of Fatima caused problems in the early uh, in 1920s, maybe in the Portuguese church. I don't think that's conclusive. He handed over judgments, definitive negative final judgment of Monsignor Biaplana. Of course, you see, that was that bishop's judgment and it could be revised. Next one, Conchita saying that Pope Paul VI and Padre Pio would see the miracle. Both have been dead for a long time. I think I think that's correct. I think that Conchita did say that. That was reported. And I think that's a problem. My explanation with that is that this was a locution that Conchita said that she received in 65. And as such, it could be that the locution was mistaken, that she was mistaken on that matter. It would not question the authenticity of the overall apparitions, just the locutions. Next one. In Conchita's diary, in the Dutch edition, we read that Paul VI knew the date of the great miracle. I have seen that read before. I have seen that written before, that Paul VI was told the date of the miracle when she visited him in Rome. But that doesn't lead us to a conclusion in either direction because Paul the Sixth has long since gone to God. And is it presuming that the miracle is going to be during his life, perhaps, but not necessarily? Next one. In 95, 20,000 pilgrims went to Garabandau, many from the USA, paying two grand a flight for tickets, and the date was false. Yeah. I, when I went to Garabandal, I was told about a number of occasions where loads of people had turned up based on rumours. I don't think, I know it's pretty, pretty bad for those 20,000 people that spent loads of money to get there, but I don't think it necessarily proves that the apparitions were false. Another guy, Professor Rutten, retired economist, he says that the miracle is going to happen. Yeah, again, that's that's not necessarily anything to do with the truth of the apparitions. Next one, according to Conchita, Pope John Paul II is the last pope on earth. Many other false seers suggest the next pope might well be the Antichrist. This way the good and faithful are soaked off from the local bishop because the latter does not recognize the apparitions. He is a bad bishop without faith. Afterwards they are incited against the next pope and so there appears a schism with Rome. Satan is the winner. Yeah, Conchita saying that 
the present Pope as the last Pope. Certainly back in the 90s, a lot of websites were saying, and this website here is, is really from the 90s, were saying that Conchita and Garabandal were all saying that John Paul II would be the last Pope. Now the party line of the Garabandalistas is that the end of times began with the reign of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, but that doesn't mean it would be the last Pope on earth and doesn't mean that the warning miracle chastisement would have happened. That's a change in, in tact. But again, Conchita's statement on John Paul II being the last Pope is a late locution. Once more, it just causes us to question whether we should believe the locutions of Conchita rather than the entirety of the apparitions during the during 1961, 1962, 1963. The thing about schism, that is an issue because there's a couple of Spanish YouTubers that think that we now have no, no valid Pope or they think that Pope Benedict is still the Pope and that, every, and that he is the last Pope. So that is an issue, but these have been really tiny schisms. We're talking about minuscule number of people. So, and there's all kinds of minuscule, minuscule schisms in the world today. So not necessarily a major telling about the apparitions themselves being false. Next one, the leader of the Garabandal Center in the Netherlands, Mr. Wim L, said during a Dutch TV program in 01, that he wasn't sure if Garabandal came from Satan or from God. I think that's interesting. And I've got a video up already on the possibility that the apparitions in Garabandal were satanic. And actually, quite often, you do find that, that people, <laughs> the Garabandal supporters, they love Garabandal, but if you push them down, what well, was it, perhaps satanic? They do kind of think, well, sometimes they kind of say, well, you know... Basically, basically, the two supporters of Garabandal are very sure that things went on there that were utterly unexplainable through a normal rational explanation. It's interesting that Wim, Mr. Wim, said that he didn't know. It seems really surprising because he's given a lot of his life to leading the Garabandal Center. I think probably overall he, he thinks they do come from God because... He's given his life, or a lot of his life, to running this Garabandal Center, which I don't think he would do if it was a 50-50 thing. So, again, not certain that that's a, that's a clincher. Next one. Uh, on the same program, the Van der Marsen brothers, they said uh, that, oh, of the brothers, the other brother was told that he would be cured on the day of the miracle. Yeah, and... um. There were other people who were told that and they've since died. But again, these were locutions, I think. I think they were locutions. But there were cases of so-called apparitions saying various things about, like the boy that, that the apparition of Our Lady said would be a priest and he never became a priest. So they are quite powerful negative arguments against Garabandal when they were actual apparitions of Our Lady during 6163 where these messages were conveyed that is kind of interesting and that needs to be explained maybe in terms of the children not understanding certainly they that is a number 10 there is an interesting critique of the apparitions our lady in apparitions saying prophetic utterances that prove to be incorrect that's interesting next element of this um Barry Hanratty told him over Lim told Hanratty told him over the phone that Hanratty had discovered that the Mars and brothers cheated with the cells of Merrick set of Merrick measles containing the pieces of the missile that the text on the little pieces appears to be Dutch oh okay so there's people making money out of Garabandal that's going to be true about loads of apparitions loads anything good people are going to try and make money illicitly out of it that only disproves the the Marsden brothers. Uh, and um, anyway, next one. Eleven, Conchita wanted to enter the convent, but Jesus told her to go back to the world. Yeah, that is kind of difficult. But again, we're talking about a late locution. Jesus, it probably m may not have been our Lord. It may well have been a mistaken locution. 
Then she married the Patrick Keenan, divorced from his wife. I know people say that this one here, part two of 11, I think that there's some debate around that issue now from what I've read. There's, yeah, there's some debate about whether he was a divorcee and whether whether um, it's true that um, not one family member was present, etc. And this stuff about two children from a first marriage, two children with different women. I think all that, I think, has since been laid to rest and that that was kind of cal calumny detraction rather detraction about Conchita I don't think that's true next one Conchita made a museum of her house she then sold it and she owns a house in New York a flat in Fatima as well compare that with Bernadette yep that's an interesting point the museum is no longer there by the way house in New York we don't know how grand this house is in New York I had heard that she had had that did have a flat in Fatima but I understand she very rarely goes there now since the death of her late husband. Conchita said to Father Pelletier that she had stolen the host from the tabernacle for the so-called mystical communion. That's interesting. I'd like to see that documented. There's no citation for that on the website. Yet they'd stolen apples, but had they repented from stealing the apples? That's certainly the response that they repented. They were truly sorrow, sorry and made an act of contrition. And maybe it wasn't so bad a theft after all. Maybe they were loads of apples in the village and it was a kind of childish game. Not a mortal sin necessarily. Probably not a mortal sin. Conchita calling contradictions. I think that's true. I think she's got a lot to answer for. And I'm surprised that she hasn't answered, given more interviews over the year next over the years next one all four seers have denied the apparitions took place that certainly happened the standard response to that is that in early apparitions the children were told that they would one day deny the truth of the apparitions not one of the seers lives in garabandal today that's true they all left they all got over to the states or mary Kuth, who moved to moved up to oviedo that's certainly true but i don't think that tells against the truth of the apparitions necessarily the story bursts with sensation i don't know about that one 19 mystic phenomena point out satanic influence the heads bending backwards as they run conchita's vocation lost when she married a divorced man our lady played hide and seek that last that hide and seek one isn't necessarily a problem i think help find shoes which lost by the pilgrimage i don't know if that's necessarily satanic sweets the little jesus were allowed to take him in his arms I'm not sure that's satanic perfumed the brushes of her slippers i don't know about that one i haven't read that in any of the in she went in haste to the mountain or anything the pope would be the last pope again that was a that was a late locution it wasn't necessarily during the days of the apparitions the unbiblical warning, again, funny enough, the warning is a late locution. It's not in the days of the apparition. The ever postponed miracle, the miracle has certainly been postponed, but it seems like the original message of Garabandal in the days of the apparitions and that we find present in the two messages of Garabandal and the little messages of the Knights of Screams, they only talk about chastisement. They don't actually talk about miracle. Maybe that was, that seems like it's quite possibly late locution also. Finally, the Garabandal fans try to undermine the local bishop authority as well as the next pope. Who's inciting this to be disobedience, God or Satan? Again, I, I think that nowadays the Garabandal supporters do generally support the fact that the bishop has said that the apparitions are not consistent with supernatural, but they emphasize that a bishop's judgment is always provisional until the Pope, until the Pope kind of puts, puts a definitive judgment on the thing, which Rome has done in other situations. Okay. I think that's, I think that's everything I've got to say on those 20 criticisms about Garabandal. Some of them I think have got more weight than others, but they're certainly all very interesting. Let me know in the comments what you think, if there's any of them that you didn't know about, if there's any of them that you think are convincing.
May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.